Hello everyone and welcome to another Build for Block video. Today is a block that I think is underused. While it may be a bit harsh for some palettes, I think if you incorporate it, it will shine tremendously. That being Blackstone. A block with such a deep black and the ability to incorporate brick, tile, and rough textures is really something that not many other blocks can accomplish. So with this beautiful block, I will show you guys what I made with it for the reference board. So let's start this off with an initial direction. When I think Blackstone, I think big evil castle. Lots of red, lots of evil. However, I wanted to go for a more neutral tone for this, which is why I wanted a black and white aesthetic, which I ultimately tossed to the side because the red nether brick was calling my name, but I'll talk about that later. So with my initial direction in mind, I went looking for inspirations for black castles that weren't too evil looking which is when I came across this really cool looking castle. I think this is from Game of Thrones, and it has a really unique look. I really like the look of the castle towers, which I ended up copying some of the features, but ultimately the overall vibe is completely different from what I wanted, so I took the tower design and moved on to other pastures, which brought me to this image. This is more or less the vibe I was going for, which is a relatively neutral looking castle, Obviously, I didn't copy the castle look because the walls were too plain and I already had the tower design from the previous picture, so this reference was more or less just an idea of how the castle would fit within its environment. So with the environment figured out, the walls are still not. So let's continue with the main feature of the walls being the gate. That would come from this image. I really like the big tines from this gate because it has an almost brutal look to it while still not looking evil. Just because it's intimidating doesn't always mean that it's evil, which is funny because I did concede to its call, which is coming up shortly. So now that we have the gate and towers, we still need the walls. So that's where this image comes in. The individual protruding battlements coming from this wall are what ultimately decided the wall design. Not exactly, but gave me a general idea of how to make something. I just needed more than a flat wall to work with. So with the exterior finished, we still need the interior. The plan for the interior goes as follows. A stable for horses, obviously. A training ground, a barracks, and a central keep, which ultimately pushed this into a more evil direction. Because the red nether brick just looked so good. And more importantly, I felt that the central keep needed more than just black and white. Which is where this image comes in. From here, I took the central building with its dome and tall spike on the top to then fly a big flag that I decided to also fly on other parts of the build as well. While this image is more blue and pink, I already had a block palette, so it made it really easy to just apply the palette to this image, and I think it ultimately looked pretty good. So from there, we can talk about the plan. This is not really a complex layout for a castle. Uh, actually, it's quite simple as far as castle layouts are concerned. I could have gone for a more complex layout, however, I was not planning on making a really big castle, so keeping the layout on a simpler side made things easier for me to execute. So with all this information and a plan, let's get to building, shall we? So before we get started, I have yet another fun fact for y'all. Did you know that castle towers have clockwise spiral staircases? This is a deliberate decision to give the advantage to the defenders. This is because most knights are right-handed, and so when attackers are fighting defenders, they have to swing their swords around the central pillar which inhibits their sword movements. Whereas by contrast, defenders have the rounded exterior wall on their swinging side, which makes it easier to hit the attackers, because the arc of the wall follows their swing. Now that I've shared this very interesting fact, now it's your guys' turn to share something as well. Preferably a like on the video, not that you guys have a lot of options, but I digress. Let's continue with the build. So, to start this off, we're going to make the castle walls, as they were the first thing I worked on, and we'll encapsulate the whole build, so let's start there. The only thing I really had in mind when working on these walls was that I wanted them to be black and white, and roughly look like some of the references. As high fantasy walls were a bit too flat to my liking, so I changed them to have a bit more depth and character as these walls are one of the first things you see when you see the build, so they need to set the tone and aesthetic of the rest of it. Overall, I'm really happy with how the walls turned out, and I think the patterns are really interesting. 
I think I incorporated white into the walls in a way that it isn't too intrusive, as black is the main color, and too much white would change the whole tone of the build, so I needed to make sure that there wasn't too much here. As for the towers, I used the Game of Thrones castle, as I felt that the slanted top would make them look a little different than your stereotypical cylindrical castle towers. I did end up changing the design a little bit, as the tops were a bit too flat when I implemented them, so I rounded the top just a bit to also incorporate the main keep, which has a dome roof. The flags are also a little extra on top to really make them feel like someone is occupying this castle. And I also just think the flags look cool. Now let's do the main keep, and then I'll do the smaller buildings inside after. So, one of the main difficulties I had with this building was that I wanted a square footprint, however I had a spherical roof. So I had to come up with some transitional designs on the corners to help blend the dome roof into the square floor. I didn't go for a circular footprint because at the time I hadn't figured out what to put inside, and working with circles is just harder. So to make it easier on myself, I tried my best to have a square bottom. However, it didn't really matter in the end because it just ended up being a throne room where the edge of the room was kind of ignored. But I do think the square exterior near the bottom made my life a little easier for decoration. So my effort was not totally in vain. As for the massive spike in the middle of the roof, that part was from my reference and I was curious if it would work or not. Now I did end up looking pretty good, so I did keep it. And I also hung a flag on it as well, which also looked really cool. The interior, as mentioned earlier, is the throne room. So I made a black stone throne with some pillars on the side to make it feel more grand. I do like the way it turned out. However, one thing I think is kind of a bit of an oddity is the fact that you can see the throne room from the entrance outside. Usually that's not the case, but it's just a minor detail that I think is kind of strange. Now to the barracks. Originally I thought I would have had a decent amount of space here. However, when actually implementing the barracks, it turned out to not really be as much space as I would have liked. Uh, now the barracks turned out all right. I do think they are one of the weaker aspects of this build, but since I didn't have a lot of space to work with, I think I did the best that I could. Maybe if I had planned a little more, then the barracks would have looked better, but ultimately, I really liked the overall size of the build, so mm, kind of give and take here. I think it's a decent compromise here. Now the stable. This is a pretty simple design. I again don't have a lot of space, but stables don't need a lot of space. I wanted to implement some red into the design, so I used crimson wood as well as spruce. Now crimson wood isn't particularly red, it's more of a pinkish red, but I do like the color it adds, so I like this design choice. The rest is pretty easy, just some hay for each stable slot, and some separation between the slots with fencing, and it's pretty much what I wanted this to be. Finally, let's add some finishing touches. Firstly, let's go over to the training ground. This is a pretty rudimentary design, with some simple targets and some dummies, but I do think it adds some much needed flavor to the other corner. As for the rest, I added in some hedges, as it needed some greenery, and since the main keep has red in it, I mixed in some roses to tie it in a little better. As for the paths, this is a pretty simple design with slabs being the main walkway, and having stairs for a nice lip to easily distinguish between path and not path. After plumbing this in, I do really like the overall look it adds to the build, as it makes it feel more refined than just some dirt paths. So, that's it. With everything finished, I really like the overall finish of this build. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but I do really like it. The walls, in my opinion, look really cool, and the main keep is an awesome centerpiece. The barracks are a bit lackluster, but overall, I do really like what they add to the overall look. So, if you enjoyed the build, make sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already, and subscribe for future content. Also, something to note is that I provide world downloads for all of my builds, so feel free to do with that as you please. But that's it for me. See you guys next time.